What's up guys, this is the Gospel According to Mark with a C, he is I, you know, I am he, just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind back again, and as always, I want to start it off by thanking everyone who likes, everyone who shares, everyone who subscribes, and everyone who hits that notification bell, as well as everyone who comments, I love your comments, you guys definitely make my day, so uh, thank you so much. And uh, you know, I'm going to try to get through this without wincing and cringing and you know, choking and dying on camera for you right now because, uh, you know, I live in this apartment building right now and uh, somebody just moved in across the hall and I think it's probably a woman and what she did was she plugged in one of those, you know, like Glade air fresheners out in the hall. This thing is strong as hell and it's giving me a headache. I don't know if any of you guys have ever gone through that. I tried the uh, Glade uh, plug-in air fresheners a long time ago and I realized I couldn't deal with it there are certain scents I guess not all of them but there are certain scents that just go straight straight to like my head man and it's like that's what's going on now I'm gonna have to go over there and introduce myself to her and uh, you know hopefully she's uh worthwhile you know what I'm saying <laughs> coming Knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. But anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to tell her to take that joint out, man. Because uh, I can't deal with it. <laughs> so uh, anyway, guys, moving on. I want to talk about this story. And I know a lot of you have heard about it. But I just want to chime in on it. Because I just cannot believe this level of sickness. And this has to deal with um, professional troll. Uh, host of HBO's politi Politically Incorrect an all-around sleazy bastard, uh, Bill Mayer, okay, and he decided he was going to chime in on the passing of American hero and icon, Stan Lee, less than a week after the man died. And uh, I'm going to read you the statement, in part, that Bill Mayer uh, wrote about Mr. Stan Lee, the great, the amazing, the uncanny, the spectacular, the incredible, the fantastic Stan Lee. Here's what this piece of shit wrote. <sighs> the guy who created Spider-Man and the Hulk has died. And America is mourning. Deep, deep mourning for a man who inspired millions to... I don't know. Watch a movie, I guess. Bill Mayer. You have got to be the biggest piece of shit ever. You're saying that you're trying to boil it down to Stan Lee just inspired millions of people to just go out and watch a movie. Meanwhile, Marvel Comics and Stan Lee was around like for decades before movies, before Marvel movies even came out, right? They were holding it down on the page for decades before they were able to successfully bring it to the movies. Besides, Bill Mayer, you, you pus Phil pinata head. Have you ever taken a visit to, um, I don't know, the children's cancer ward in uh, hospitals around the country when grown people will dress up like, I don't know, Captain America, Iron Man, the Hulk, Spider-Man, and they will raise these children's spirits in their darkest hours when they are sick and even worse, when they're dying. But you don't see things like that. You don't see the faces of hope, the everyday faces of hope that this man has touched all around the world. Bill Mayer, at best, you're short-sighted. At worst, you're an evil, satanic bastard. Moving on. Uh, someone on Reddit posted, I'm so, incredib I'm so incredibly grateful I lived in a world that included Stan Lee. Personally, I'm grateful I lived in a world that included oxygen and trees. But to each his own. <laughs> oh God, this this dude, man, this has got to be like one of the worst wastes of human life you'll ever meet in the world. By the way, guys, I, I don't know if you are aware of who I'm talking about. We're talking about Bill Mayer, right? Now, some of you might actually need a visual of who this man is. So uh, here he is, right here. Okay, there you go. That's Bill Mayer. He's very uh, grateful for trees and oxygen. He seems to also be grateful for prostitution, as well as transsexuals. But anyway, <clears throat> moving on. <laughs> um, now, I have nothing against comic books. I read them now and then when I was a kid and I was 
all out of Hardy Boys <laughs> and Nancy Drew, no doubt. But the assumption everyone had back then, both the adults and the kids, was that comics were for kids. And when you grew up, you moved on to big boy books without the pictures. <sighs> All right, guys, so there it is. Like I said, uh, there's more to be said. You can find it all over the internet. I just wanted to read that part. Now, um, one of the things that I wanted to point out, too, because I didn't see anybody else noticing it. They let them get away with this. Comic books are for kids. Now, from the earliest days of comics, from back in probably the 30s and the 40s, comics were written in magazines that were, you know, adult-oriented. And you can find stories such as uh, spy stories. Uh, they were no noir they were uh, suspense, they were horror. As a matter of fact, I have one on my nightstand right here. This is a, a huge collection of uh, horror comics from the 30s and the 40s up until today. All right. So you see what I'm talking about? Some of those comics were uh, EC comics, I believe it was. Tales of, uh, as a matter of fact, Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt came from the comics. And, uh, you know, suspense and horror and shock. You know, and as you can see, a lot of these got very, very graphic, okay? This, my friends, is from the 50s, okay? So it's like a lot of these comics, they were geared towards adults. As a matter of fact, uh, Batman was uh, probably derived somehow from the old detective comics. I mean, they were actually called detective comics, so they were probably derived from uh, detective novels and things like that. Batman was dark in the very beginning. Now, of course, in the 60s, he moved into the camp stuff that you saw on TV. But, uh, and then we went back to the dark Batman, you know, uh, thanks to uh, Frank Miller, you know, in the uh, Dark Knight Returns. You know, so, uh, and then all of the subsequent movies kind of used that as a template for the Dark Knight series that, you know, that followed. So uh, I would say that you are wrong, Bill Maher, by saying or suggesting that comics are just for children. Um, let me see, uh, what else? Uh, you know, you had a lot of, uh, you know, comics that obviously were uh, geared towards social issues and things like that. And Stan Lee actually tried to put a lot of that into his comics. A lot of the uh, human condition, you know, the things that human beings uh, dealt with, uh, you know, all of the dysfunction and stuff like that. So, um, you know, this guy, he is clearly um, a cultural leech you know, who has very, very limited relevance. Years from now, nobody's going to remember this guy except how stupid and, you know, what a jackass he was and a sign of the time. You know, you'll put him in a, in a time capsule the same as you would put, like, a Morton Downey Jr., you know, in a, in a time capsule. I think it was Morton Downey Jr., right? I, or am I thinking about Robert Downey Jr.? But it was Morton Downey, right? The old talk show host. See, that's the way people are going to think about uh, uh, Bill Mayer. You know, it's going to be like, oh, whatever happened to that guy with the uh, greasy, slick back hair, the sleazy guy who used to hang out with transgenders. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, like I was saying, guys, um, that's what we're dealing with here. And uh, it's very, very uh, disrespectful. And a lot of people, like I think in one of my uh, comment sections, they were asking me, why don't we just ignore what's going on in Star Wars? And it'll just go away. Why don't we just ignore these people who are invading our culture and they'll just go away but see the thing about it is is those of us who love the culture who grew up with the culture we have to fight back we have to push back because if we just go away and we're just quiet and we let these people have their voices exclusively then what they're gonna do is they're they're gonna change the narrative which is what you see here Bill Meyer wants the whole world to laugh at, at comic book collectors and people who write all, I mean the whole industry, people who write, people who illustrate, people who draw, people who adapt them into films. Like this guy wants to just trash the whole thing, you know, and if we just let these people go unchallenged, they'll take over it creatively and what you'll end up having is something like Star Trek Lower Decks, you know, something that just totally trashes everything that we've come to love. So we have to speak out whenever we see things like this. And of course, The Last Jedi. You know, we have things like that that just change everything and want to change uh, the perception of it as well as the audience for it, you know, by splitting the fandom and things like that. So those of us who truly, truly love it and are passionate about it, we have a responsibility to speak out about it because there is legacy here. There is tradition here. And I want to share uh, something else with you guys uh, very quickly, personally. And uh, what it is, is these are a couple of personal pictures, okay? This is a picture of my son that I posted on Facebook probably about six years ago, okay? 
This is my son here. Hold on, guys. Hold on. All right, that's him. Probably about uh, four or five years old. And I wrote here, we were asking Xavier how his day was at school yesterday. And he told us about how so-and-so wasn't his best friend anymore. And then I have in parentheses, even though they're probably friends again by now. And it seemed to kind of hurt his feelings. So I told him, don't worry, mommy and daddy love him and will always be his best friends. For once, my little chatterbox was speechless, but the quiet smile on his face was priceless. Then we went and chased down some bad guys. Sometimes I, it kind of makes me sad that these times must pass. So um, as you can see, guys, uh, actually, let me share one more for you. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Once again, that's me. Okay. <laughs> that's me. And what I wrote was, little boy down. Xavier being sick this weekend wasn't part of the plan, but we might as well have fun with it. He's about to get a visit from your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And then I wrote, Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a father can. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway, that's back when I was on Facebook. I had to get off because the anti-Trump stuff was just really making me sick. And I love my family, so I'm not arguing on Facebook with people. But anyway, like I was saying, guys, um, this is what Bill Maher doesn't understand. Okay, there are people all over the world who have been touched by Stan Lee's creation and everybody around him, you know, he, he wasn't just him by himself. But the comic book industry is a noble industry, you know, and um, telling pictures, or I should say telling stories with pictures that come out of our rich imaginations is an admirable thing, you know, it's talent. And people should be encouraged with talent. When I was a kid and I used to read my comics, Sometimes my pops would get mad at me, you know, or if he wanted to punish me, he would rip my comics apart. I've been dealing with people who uh, devalue comics and the comic book industry my whole entire life. That's why I wanted to actually get on the camera and say something about this, because I do feel like I have something to add about it, because, add to it, because I know the attitude. I know where it comes from. You know, the belittling and the devaluing of a, a whole industry and people who are talented and things like that. It's wrong. So uh, I just wanted to say that, Bill Maher, you're, you're just, I have no words for you, bro. It's like I didn't even want to waste time talking about your dumb ass. But, you know, I just wanted to put that message out there for anyone who might get it twisted and give this man any type of uh, validation whatsoever. He should be dismissed for what he said. Of course, he has the right to say what he says. That's not even the point. It's his opinion. But um, that, it's just that. It's the opinion of a sleazy dude who knows how to say things to get a rise out of people. And it must work because we're all talking about it. So uh, anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, tell me what you think in the comment section. I will appreciate it as always. This is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. I'll catch you on the next one. Rock on.